This entire USB kit cost me 15 Australian dollars. That's under 10 USD. Today, we're going to cover the most common audio mistakes I see daily from new streamers and creators and exactly how to fix them. And to make it more realistic, I'm not gonna use some big fancy $200 microphone I got sent by a company and pretend like I didn't. No, I'm gonna use this bad boy to set it up entirely. And at the end of the video, I will play you two audio clips. One is from this $1,300 audio setup I use for my normal videos, and the other will be from this $10 crap microphone kit and we'll be able to tell whether you can honestly tell a difference actually i needed that straight out of the gate i just have to put this out there because it's far more common than you realize the amount of streamers who are sat there with a 200 dollars hyperx quadcast which buying one of those is already a pretty common mistake anyway and then they sit there talking into it but they sound terrible for some reason well it's usually because they have the wrong microphone selected in their inputs they're sat there talking into their mic, but in reality, OBS is set to use their webcam, headset, or the built-in microphone on their computer, which of course, if it's built into those things, it wasn't prioritized and honestly will always give terrible quality audio. I'm not joking. I've been in partner streamers chats who are my friends and thought, hey, can you check your OBS mic input? Only for them to check midstream and realize they were using a webcam as a microphone while having a thousand dollar microphone set up. So to confirm this, I want you to go to your OBS, I want you to go to your settings, and I want you to make sure the correct microphone is selected on one of your mic tracks. If it isn't labeled so it's easy for you to figure out, try different microphones and just lightly tap or quietly speak into your mic until the right one is being picked up. Next up, we've got placement. This is literally the microphone killer. You could have a $2,000 microphone, set it entirely up and have it sound worse than this $15 microphone purely because you've placed it terribly. Let me give you an example. but. First, because I spend way too much money on these microphones for these videos, I do have to say thank you to our sponsor and special guest today who has me covered. Oh, hey, I'm cool, LJ. Why am I cool? I got tattoos. They hurt a lot. So if you don't want to get tattoos, but you still want to be cool, check out Own.TV, the one-stop shop for all things streaming related. Check out these badass looking overlays they've got over there. Yeah, those are great, aren't they? They're modular, customizable, and they look downright sick. The good sick, not the sick like we've dealt with for three years. Because they're modular, you can save on PC resources by deleting anything you don't want. But even better than that, you can also just choose static ones or just go really minimal with their minimalist style. I love their minimalist style. Minimalism is cool. So if you want to get your new overlay pack, then check out the link in the description right now. I don't care, because I'm cool. But it does help me, please. So watch this. This sounds good, right? Until I start to move it away and obviously I lose a lot of the presence. My voice just disappears. Something I've noticed a lot in new streamers is they don't like having their microphone in frame or they don't have space on their desk to put it close to them. So they end up putting it really far away. This makes the mic sound terrible and incredibly quiet. So what do they do? Well, they boost the gain. They make it much louder digitally inside OBS. But this doesn't just boost their voice. It literally boosts the entire room and every sound that's being picked up in it. The fans going on in the background, the keyboard clacking away, their mum yelling at them to finish their homework and go to bed, and their dad throwing beer cans at them from off camera. Seriously, all of it gets picked up. I'd say 60 to 70% of people out there having mic issues can really solve their problems simply by fixing the positioning of their microphone, and that's it. First, you need to make sure you know where to speak into on your microphone. For example, on this one, I have to speak into this side of the silver mesh, despite there being absolutely no markings. And you can really tell a difference if I'm speaking into the top or even underneath it compared to the correct side. If you can't figure yours out, put some headphones on, turn on monitoring inside OBS or Streamlabs in your audio controls, and then hold the microphone and talk into it as you spin and try different spots on it. Once you know which side to talk into, you'll want to position it about three to four inches away from your mouth, but not directly in front of it to avoid popping and heavy breathing. If you make your hand like a hang 10 sign and put it on your chin going down and then put your mic at the other end of it, you'll usually find that's a really nice spot for you to place your mic. Obviously, moving your mic in closer like this means it will pick up your voice a lot better. So if your levels or gain were set really high when it was far away and now you've moved it in, you'll obviously be much louder and you'll actually likely start peaking, which we can see on our levels here if we check OBS. 
But what are levels? Well, that is this little green, yellow, and red bar at the bottom of OBS. This indicates how quiet or loud your different audio sources are. The goal of your levels is for your microphone to sit perfectly in the yellow section and not reach the red too often. This will be around minus 10 or minus 12 dB, which is marked out by the little numbers you can see on the side here. If your levels max out at the top of the red filling the entire bar, you'll peak. This distorts your audio and causes it to sound terrible, or sometimes it will also cut out entirely to silence. So by aiming to keep it in the top of the yellow, you give yourself some headroom to handle loud, unexpected noises like a scream, a lot, <gasps> but you'll still sometimes peak if you go too hard. So just be aware of that. That said, sometimes you can be peaking even if your OBS says you are quiet and in the yellow. This is because there are multiple places to change your gain, such as maybe a built-in knob on a microphone like a Blue Yeti or the Windows sound settings. And then of course, in OBS, you can add things to make yourself louder. So earlier in the chain of places you can do it might be maxing out and peaking, which will lead you to sound terrible. So as I said, depending on your mic, there are a few places I want you to change your gain first, and I want you to do them in a very specific order. First, head to OBS and grab your mic slider for the active microphone and make sure it's maxed all the way at the top. Next, if you have a microphone like a Blue Yeti, it might come with a knob on it. AKA it controls the microphone's built-in sensitivity. So you're going to want to adjust this before anywhere else. Raise this up until your audio sounds clear, crisp, and isn't peaking. Now, the next spot is actually your Windows settings. If you didn't know, when you set your microphone up in Windows, you can digitally change the gain. If this is set too high or even too low, it can cause massive issues when trying to make your audio sound good in OBS. Now, if you do have a knob on your microphone at this point, I'd honestly recommend lowering down your Windows sensitivity and raising the knob to maximum. Then once the knob is at max, raise the Windows gain back up until it sounds good and sits in the yellow of your OBS. Now, as you can see, I'm on 91 here and I think I sound pretty good. But if I max it out, I am, I am peaking hard right now. But if I lower it right down, well, I, there's no presence to my voice. So we're going to put it back to 91 where it sits quite nicely and close that because we can see we're leveled nicely at minus 12. If you have the correct input selected, you've positioned your mic properly and you've changed the levels on your microphone, then inside your Windows settings while watching your levels on OBS to see the indicator reaching yellow, then you should be sounding pretty good by now. The final tip for this section is to add a single filter to the end called a limiter. Head to your mic source inside OBS or Streamlabs, right click filter, add filter and add a limiter. The reason I say a limiter and not a compressor here is because I want to make this as simple as possible for a beginner. And it technically does work differently to a compressor. The limiter will cap how loud you can be. You can technically still peak with a limiter on, but imagine it's more like a ceiling. And if you reach it, the audio is automatically moved down or capped so it can't be too loud. When you add this, make sure you drag it right to the bottom of any other filters you already have because you want this to be the final filter in the list. I have a really important tip coming up soon with filters, so stay tuned for that. But first, let's talk about something small but incredibly annoying for a lot of your viewers. Stemming from what I think is a lack of confidence lately, I am noticing a massive trend in streamers, especially new streamers overproducing their audio. They don't like the sound of their own voice yet because they haven't spent a long time working with it. So they go and they grab EQ or any other filter and then they spend ages making themselves sound like a Barry White deep juicy tones kind of guy. But it ends up just sounding incredibly unnatural because that's not their voice. The rule for all filters is to apply them lightly. The moment you go overboard with any filter, whether it's your equalizer, your voice mods, your noise suppression, your limiters, or your noise gate, is the moment you start having problems with your audio. The most common version of this, since most of you likely aren't using EQ yet, is actually with your noise suppression and noise gate, because you just don't understand what the settings are and how they work yet. So take a noise gate, for example. To add this, you go again to your audio, you right click, you go filters, add filter and add a noise gate. Make sure this is early on the chain. Personally, I think it should be the very first filter in the list. I know this will sound surprising, but a noise gate is a gate for your noise. When you set the dB limit, otherwise known as an open threshold, then if a sound reaches that threshold, it will open the gate and let all of the audio through. It also has a closed threshold, which helps define what background noise is. If you want to eliminate background noise for when you aren't speaking, you'll add this and monitor your audio and then slowly change your closed threshold until you can't hear any background noise. Let me demonstrate with a fan. Here you go, it's my biggest fan. Now, as you can hear, that is not pleasant to listen to. But if we turn on my noise gate, 
but if I speak, it instantly comes back. Now, let me show you first what the open threshold does. If I change my open threshold to be really high, then it won't open unless I reach it. But if I lower it back down to minus 19, well, it comes back in, but you'll notice that at the start of my sentences, they're being cut off a little bit. This is because my open threshold is set too high and I'm starting my sentences lower. You'll also notice that the middle of my sentences are also being cut out. Let's play with the close threshold. First, we'll turn our fan back on. Now we've lowered our close threshold down to minus 82, which means when we get to minus 82 in our audio, that's when our mic will start to close. See how it's struggling there? This is because the audio in the room is never going below that, so it's never closing. And then as you can see, you have your attack time, your hold time, and your release time. A lot of these can be left to default, but it's good to understand them. Let's give you an example of when you've set your attack time badly. Let's say it's really high. When I start talking, you can hear that it starts to fade in and it takes a really long time to get there. That's because my attack time is taking a long time for the gate to open. But when we set it to 25, it opens in a heartbeat. I'm not going to move that fan back yet, despite how ugly it looks, because I needed to show you the final last mistake, background noise. When it comes to eliminating background noise, the best advice anyone can give you is to level your microphone properly, have good placement for it like I showed you earlier, and if that doesn't work, just remove the source of the noise. Seriously, the best thing you can do rather than pushing and pulling your audio digitally and risking distorting the quality is just remove the issue from your room. Move the fan further away, lower the settings to be quieter, kick your mum out of your room, or just do whatever you can. Seriously, w watch this, let me show you. This is me talking into my microphone with a fan in my room. And then what happens when I turn the fan off is the background noise just kind of completely vanishes. Yeah, it's pretty easy. But of course, you can't always remove something. For example, I live in Australia in Queensland where it reaches 38 degrees Celsius with 90% humidity on a normal day. So I need a fan on next to me or I'll die on stream. So I will add a different filter. Now I'll add it the same way I showed you last time, but this time we're adding a noise suppression filter. Now it's really important to say that I only add this very lightly if I can. If you push this too hard, it will start to strip away at the presence in your voice and make you sound terrible. For this, I'm gonna turn my noise gate off just so you can see how drastic it's going to be. Yeah, that's not a great sound. Three, two, one. Yeah. Y yeah, it's, that's my fan on max right next to me. And while it does strip a little bit of my voice away, it's still amazing. Before I show you the rest of that noise suppression stuff, I just have to say the biggest mistake with noise suppression is thinking it is designed to remove all background noise. The reality is noise suppression just removes white noise like humming or fans really well at that, but it won't remove the sound of a keyboard clacking away. For that, you need to use a different filter instead. You need to use the expander filter. In short, an expander makes quiet sounds quieter, and typically you would place this near the end of your filter chain after all your compression and other effects, but before your limiter. Now, the expander is much more complicated, as you can see just from looking at its settings, but that's because it's much more powerful. I personally recommend that when you're using this, just use their presets and don't play around too much, especially if you're not audio savvy. And again, you're really only using this filter if you have a bunch of keyboard sounds and you can't get good placement. Don't add these filters if you don't need them. The first preset is called Expander, and it's good for just a small amount of reduction. If you've done all your levels and placement, but can't remove your keyboard sounds, this should be a good place to start trying. With my Expander turned off, let me show you the sound of my keyboard. So we add an Expander, and it's not going to do everything I want it to do, but... The other preset is called The Gate, and it is much more intense, and it pushes a lot of the background noise down, but remember, if your background noise is too loud, it stops being background noise and just mixes with your voice. This means it can also push your voice down. Again, the only real solution is to remove the source causing the background noise. And now, my boils, my ghouls, it is time for you to guess which mic is the correct mic. I'm going to play two sound clips. And I'm not going to be one of those YouTubers who plays you two sound clips, you write all in the comments, and then I turn around and go, ah, jokes on you, I was using the same mic twice, you've been pranked. 
Okay, so for this test, I'm going to remove all the filters and everything we've just done. I just want to compare the sound quality of this microphone against this nice, big, expensive one. So you might notice a change, you might not, but here are the two mics now. This is audio clip one, and I want you to listen to this and realize I'm not trying to sell you on not buying good gear. I'm just trying to tell you that you can do amazing things with budget equipment. And this is audio clip two, which again, I want you to listen to this and realize I'm not trying to tell you not to invest in good equipment. I'm just trying to tell you that with a budget, you can still get great sounding quality. So which mic was which? Comment it down below. Oh, you think the second one was the Shure SM7B? <laughs> 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 oh, yes, well, you've been pranked. They were both the microphone that's $10. I just recorded one of the audio clips with all my filters and settings wrong and having it across the room. And then the other one I recorded properly with all the things correct. Yeah, I know I said I wouldn't, but I felt like I had to. This is how it sounds? I, I mean, I heard it on the day, but listening now in the edit, it sounds... Brilliant. I don't understand. It only cost me $10 at a grocery store. How does it sound just as good as all these mics that influencers keep telling me to buy? I mean, sure, it's not perfect, but if I was creating content as a beginner, then this would be great. Are influencers recommending expensive mics for their own personal gain? No, 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 no. They wouldn't do that. People would call them out. They're not going to tell people to buy something more expensive for a few hundred dollars with their affiliate links just to earn more off their audience. They wouldn't do that to people. Wait, but if they did, then all the big brands that they recommended would be happy and they'd get sent more products, which means they make more content and they could earn more money by recommending new mics by saying the old mics are dead. No, I refuse to believe it. They can't do that. I refuse to be like the rest of them. I won't be another influencer gnashing my filthy jaws at my viewers' wallets, begging for them to click my affiliate links. No! I'll just ask them to subscribe and watch this video on budget gear instead and save themselves money and don't fall for the scam of buying expensive equipment you don't need. See you next week, guys. <laughs>